All right, we back. Topic for the day is going to be, is your mind a home or is it a prison? And we've all heard of the term mental prison. You know, everybody's heard of that. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and really what the mental prison is, is just when you allow your mind to control pretty much your life, you know, instead of realizing that um, your mind is a tool. Your mind isn't you. Your mind is a tool. Just like a drill is a tool or a screwdriver is a tool. It's the same thing that the mind is. But uh, we've been taught to believe that, you know, whatever your mind says about you, that's what you, that's what you're saying about yourself. You know, that's, that's you, your mind is you, but I've learned through meditation that that is not true. And the reason why I bring up meditation is because there's a bunch of different benefits for meditation. I won't go down the list of them, but for one of the main ones that I've, I've experienced for myself and pretty early on was you can become the watcher. Now, what do I mean by the term the watcher? The watcher is the being, which is really you, the being watching your mind, okay? Stay with me. <laughs> the being watching your mind. So there's different levels of consciousness, right? And as your consciousness rises, you become the watcher in way more scenarios than you, than you would think. You know, so when I say being the watcher of your mind, I'll just give you an example. So let's say uh, somebody says something to you, says something disrespectful to you, right? Now, a normal person or a regular person would just would probably fire back or do something reactive, right? Whereas somebody like me, in most cases, somebody like me would uh i wouldn't say the first thing that pops in my head to that person there's a really low chance that i would i'm not gonna say that i wouldn't but there's a very low chance that i would say the first thing that pops in my head because i know the first thing that pops in my head is going to be something irrational uh emotional or reactive and not responsive you know what i'm saying so basically what i'm saying is when you become the watcher you can you create space in your mind because some people, when they feel an emotion or they feel something in their brain or they get a thought, they act on it or they move on it immediately. Whereas somebody that's rolled, uh, raised their consciousness up enough to become the watcher of their mind, watcher of their thoughts, they can get thoughts and then just let them go. Or they get thoughts and they observe them for a little while and then they let them go. You know, They can kind of um, discern whether that's a thought that I need to act on or a thought that I just need to let come in and go out, you know? And I think the easiest way to, I guess, gain that ability and, and raise your consciousness is, like I said earlier, through meditation, man. Because when you meditation never really clicked for me until I became the watcher, until I really understood what it meant to be the watcher. And really all that is, is when you first start meditating, you... You have a lot, you probably have a lot going on in your mind. You got a lot of thoughts going on in and out, you know, and you have to learn to just be still and just let that silence, just let it run, let it run, let it run, let it run. And eventually it'll die down. And then uh, it's almost like you, 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 your consciousness rises above, like this is your brain and your consciousness just kind of rises above it. I mean, you can kind of see it from like a top down perspective instead of feeling like you're you're in it. You're not when you're in it, you look like this. But when you rise above it, you can see it for what it is. You know, hopefully I'm making sense. Um, and that's that's the exact way that I learned how to become the watcher. And from that point on, I pretty much learned how to escape the mental prison, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't get negative thoughts and stuff like that anymore, but they're, it's very, very, very rare. And even when I do, I know that it's, it's not something that I need to believe, you know, just because it's something that I'm thinking about in my mind. 
you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't allow it to, to pull me down. And once you get to that point, you can make your mind your friend because you can feed yourself the right things to make sure your mind has the right things floating in it, if that makes sense. You want to put, uh, you want to, you want to surround yourself and consume things that bring you more positivity as opposed to negativity, you know? And that could be through the music you listen to, the videos you watch, the people you're around, especially the people you're around, the environment you're in, all that stuff contributes to your well-being. And we got to keep that in mind when we when we do everything, honestly. You got to look at your job. You know, is your job a weird environment? Is it a toxic environment? It's It's affecting this. You know, the music you listen to on a regular basis, depending on what it is, it could pull you down, it could pull you up, you know? But you have to be discerning enough to make that decision and know what's good for you, know what's not good for you. You know what I'm saying? Certain individuals, sometimes we got to cut off people that we've known for a long time because they've just been pulling us down. They've been leeching us. They've been draining us, you know? Sometimes you just got to let them go for your, for, your, for your betterment. And that don't mean let them go forever. It might just be for a short amount of time until you can get yourself to where you need to be and you can deal with that person accordingly, you know? Um, but it's very possible, man. I'm, I'm, I've done it. I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an example of it, you know. And I know plenty of other individuals that have done the same things that I've done and experienced the same things that I've experienced. You know what I'm saying? So, mainly for the people out there that you know feel like they're just in a negative headspace and maybe they're in a hole that they feel like they can't get out of or their life just not getting any better. Like, start meditating, bro. <laughs> That's the best advice I can give you. Start meditating and get to that point where you can rise above your thoughts and then you realize, damn, I had this fucked up this whole time. And and now I'm starting to understand how this actually works because a lot of people are being used by their minds. But realistically, like I said earlier, the mind is a tool. We use the mind. You know, the mind doesn't use you, but a lot of people are being used by their minds. And I used to be one of those people. So I know exactly how it is. I know how it could seem like what I'm saying is either bullshit or literally impossible. But trust me, dude, I've been in, uh, uh, I was in a really dark space for some years. Like, like, I think it was like seven, seven, eight years ago. It was a while ago, man. But I've been there. Trust me. I know what it's like. I've been depressed. I've, I've had them times where, you know what I'm saying? I've had those times. I'm not going to go into detail, but I've had those times, man. And, and I'm a perfect example of, bro, you can turn things around. You can you can make this something. You can make this your best fucking friend. But you've got to rise above your thoughts and understand that I use this. It doesn't use me. Best way for me to put it. So hopefully all that made sense, man. Um that was something that I wanted to, I got the idea last night and I was like, you know what, let me, let me see if I can make a video on that. So there it is, man. Is your mind a friend or is your mind a prison? So uh, let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Leave a like. I'm gonna catch y'all on the next video, man. Y'all take it easy. Peace.